All right, the last case here, um, freight charges, let me just get the slide here. Freight charges, this is less common, but also mm -hmm. likely for company to company, business to business um, selling events. It's likely that seller will be the party paying the freight charge as well. Okay, but this is less common compared to FOB shipping point. For the most, for most of the problems you see, it will be FOB shipping point, meaning customer, the purchaser, will be paying the freight charge. Okay, but in case the problem also states that the um, shipping term is FOB destination, then seller will be the party paying the freight charges, and they have the title of the goods all throughout the transportation process until it reaches the customer's home or the customer's company, then the title of the goods transfers to the customer. Okay, so in this case here, let's say the freight charge is $100, and seller is the party paying this to FedEx or UPS company, the transaction would look like this. You will have a delivery expense account. This is a regular expense account. Regular expense account, normal balance is under the debit side. You have $100 there. And so in terms of the seller's perspective, if they are paying the freight charges, this is an operating expense for the company. Unlike earlier, for as, as a purchaser, if you purchase an item into your warehouse, there's free charges that you need to pay. We think of this as a package with inventory costs. This is a necessary charge if you purchase inventory into your warehouse, freight in charge. In this case here, this is freight out. Because if you are the seller, you're paying the free charges. This is the freight cost related to shipping out the goods to your customer. Freight out charge. Freight out um, cost is considered. Freight out charge is considered a delivery expense for um, seller side of the business. So in this case, your FOB destination, your customer would not be journalizing anything. They don't have anything related to freight charges in their book. But your book, you have delivery expense increased, reducing cash. If you're paying cash immediately to um, transportation company. And we'll go over a few other operating expenses. So this term is also new for this chapter. We'll be separating expenses into two different categories and um, delivery expense is part of the operating expense. So the net effect of all the sales transactions that we talked about earlier, going back to the first slide that I show you in this cycle, overall we want to get to is what is the net amount of sales revenue that we're getting out of all those transactions. So you may have originally the sales revenue amount, and the simplest case would be you just made a transaction, incurring sales revenue, getting the revenue back. If you don't have the middle card, that will be it. But if customers returns a part of the goods to you, you need to reduce that amount under sales returns and allowances. And if they do pay within a discount period, then you also need to reduce any discounts that you offer them. So then overall, the net sales revenue will be using the original sales revenue, subtracting returns, subtracting any discounts. That will really be the cash that you'll be getting from them. Okay, net sales amount. I'm going to give you a few seconds. I notice some of you are taking notes.
So again, this transaction only occurs for FOB destination. In the case that your company is selling items to customer and the shipping term agreement is FOB shipping point, then customer will be paying freight charges and you don't have to record this. Okay, this journal entry only happens under this credit, this shipping term, FOB destination, when seller is the party paying freight charges. Otherwise, it will be the purchaser's company journalizing the entries on freight, not seller. Okay, FOB shipping point will be the purchaser journalizing entries.